This week on Girls Planet 999, the girls have a special mission. Get admitted to a Korean university. Hello, my people. Welcome to the Score Channel. My name is Meacham, and today we're going to show you how to study in Korea. Didn't you already do that? No, that was that was North Korea. This is South Korea, a fantastic country that is quickly becoming a top destination for international students. South Korea combines some of the most fascinating ancient culture with some of the most modern city life that you'll find on the planet. You might even see some stray kids there. Now, Korean universities more or less follow the American system for reasons. That means it's going to take you about four years to get your bachelor's degree in Korea. You can apply to most universities through the website studyinkorea.go.kr. But after that, there's really no standardization between one university and the next. Deadlines in particular are some of the most confusing that I've ever seen. These deadlines are next level, next level, psycho, psycho. after school, <laughs> game of Russian roulette. Russian Korea's school year starts in March, which means that your application is going to be due in the year before. But the exact dates are all over the place. Unlike American universities or European universities where there's just a single deadline and you can apply any time before that deadline, in Korea it's common for universities to use application blocks. These are little chunks of time where you have to get your application in. For example, Seoul National University has a block of just two weeks to apply in the month of July. If you miss that window, you can't get in. Sukmyeon Women's University does the same thing, except their block is in September. Some have multiple blocks, like KAST, which has an early admission block and then a regular admission block, each one lasting about a month long. You're gonna have to start researching well in advance if you wanna study in Korea. You're definitely gonna have to make sure you keep track of your times and get all your documents in as soon as possible. So let's talk about what documents you need. Every university in Korea is gonna ask you for your high school transcripts, and they expect you to have 12 years of education, just like European countries do. If you're country has less, write the university, ask them if you're eligible anyway. They may ask you to send your documents along with a letter to the president of the school and they will review it manually and determine if you're eligible for admission. If you have to do that, you'll also have to write an explanatory statement. This is a document required anytime your profile or your documents don't match the typical requirements. You're also going to need to have one really kick-ass recommendation letter. Korean universities will accept one letter, so make sure it's the best one you have. Like the United States, Korea also cares about extracurricular activities. And if you're interested in that, check out the video we made about it up here. You can upload awards or certificates that confirm your participation in various activities. You will want to document these somewhat. It's not quite like the US where you can just sort of list them in your application and everything's good. They actually do ask for some images or certificates. Get your coaches, for example, to write you a letter that verifies that you were on the team. Korea also accepts AP exams, A-levels, IGC, CSE and also the International Baccalaureate or any other European Baccalaureate. If you've gone through any of those systems, you're in smooth like butter. Smooth like butter. Now all documents do need to have an apostle seal and they need to be translated either into English or Korean. And speaking of translation, it's a good time for us to talk about the language barrier. If you want permission to dance, we don't need you're gonna have to take some language tests. Now, there are programs that are entirely in English, so you can just take an English test and get admitted. If that's the case, you're gonna have to take a TOEFL or an IELTS with a score of at least 80 or 6.0 to enter. However, the majority of programs are either mixed language programs or they're entirely in Korean. The TOEIC 2 test is the one that you want to take, and then from there, you're gonna try to get at least a level three, which is passing the TOEIC 2. If you can get a level three, you'll be able to get into university, but you will have to take some extra Korean courses and you won't be able to register for your major specific courses, only general education courses for the first year. If you get level four, you'll be able to register for some of your major specific courses. You only have to take one semester of Korean and level five basically means you could be a member of EXO. Like the SAT, the topic only comes around a few times a year. Outside of Korea, there may only be one chance for you to take the test locally. Here in Lima, for example, there's only one day a year where we can take the 
the test. If you really need to take the test and you've missed your one opportunity, I would honestly recommend that you actually go to South Korea since there are more dates in Korea and it would be a good opportunity for you to check out the universities, get to know the area a little bit more and see if it's really a good fit for you. While you're there, you can also practice your Korean, which you're going to want to use. Korea ranks more or less around Italy and Spain in terms of its English language proficiency. Once you get outside of Seoul, you're going to find that not a lot of people speak or even understand English, so you want to learn some Korean just to be able to get around and enjoy the culture. On the bright side, Korean is not nearly as difficult as a language like Japanese or Chinese. You don't actually have to memorize thousands of symbols with Hangul, so it's a little bit easier to learn. I would say the language barrier is three K-pop stars out of five. Now, when talking about finances, Korea is actually a lot cheaper than people realize. You'll pay anywhere from $7,000 to about $12,000 a year just for tuition, which makes it much more affordable than most countries. And there are tons of scholarships that can make it even cheaper. Most universities in Korea do get some form of government aid, which allows them to offer scholarships to international students. These are some thick scholarships. Many of them will cover at least 50% of your tuition. Some of them will go all the way and cover 100% and they'll give you money for housing and even help you cover your medical insurance. Some of them even include travel expenses so you can fly back home once a year. Now you may be able to qualify for these scholarships right away based on your profile, but most of the time you're gonna be able to qualify after your first semester. So once you get in and you get good grades in the university, they can reward you by letting you get this scholarship. So with a scholarship, you may not have to pay anything for tuition. And then there's living expenses. The biggest cost will be for housing because you're talking about cities that are very densely populated. Living space is limited. So you're gonna need to find housing on campus if you wanna have a good deal. Expect to pay about $200 a month. That's a lot cheaper than the $1,000 a month you would pay for an apartment for yourself. Plus you'd have to spend money on electricity and water and all that other stuff. So all in all, you could easily study in Korea for less than $10,000 a year. And even if you don't get a scholarship, you're looking at spending only about $20,000 a year, which is much more affordable than you would have to spend in, say, the United States or Canada. You'll have plenty of cash left over to dance the night away. Let's dance the night away. Once you're admitted, you'll be able to apply for your D2 visa, which is going to let you stay in Korea as a student. It's pretty similar to most other visa applications. You're gonna bring the form, a passport photo, bring your passport, your letter of admission. You will need to show $15,000 in the bank so that you won't be hungry and begging for money on the street. There is one odd requirement though. You have to bring your university's official business registration certificate. Apparently this is sort of a way for you to confirm that the university is actually a legit accredited institution. Why they don't just have a list of these is beyond me, but apparently some universities will just send this to you when you are admitted. Others, you may have to request it, but it is something that the embassy is gonna want to have along with your application. Your visa is good for two years, but once you arrive, you'll get your alien registration card, and then you'll be able to live in Korea and come and go as you please. If you wanna work part-time while you're there, you can do so. All you have to do is ask for an S3 visa that goes alongside your D2 visa and you'll be able to work part-time. And that, my people, is everything you need to know to study in South Korea. If you're interested in other countries, we have a God's menu of options in our Study Abroad series playlist. So check that out. And I don't want to cry. So please, consider subscribing to the channel so that my cat comes back. And I'll see you next week.